Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I'm doing another video blog uh, on this beautiful April day here in Jerusalem. It's a magnificent sunny day. Firstly, because this is completely off topic for my recent YouTube videos, which are about video stuff and all manner of other topics. I should probably introduce myself. Uh, my name is Daniel Rosal, Daniel Rosal. Um, I live here in Jerusalem in Israel. I'm originally from Ireland. And I'm doing a video today about something that I really care about. And I guess it's a question leading on to a thought. And that question is, why don't more men, especially young men, share openly about taking SSRI medication, commonly known as antidepressants? Now, um, I'm making this video because I have shared before on this YouTube channel a couple of videos regarding my experience taking SSRIs. Uh, last year, I went on an SSRI called Zoloft. If you're watching this, you probably know what Zoloft is. And I did one video just to say I had a pretty easy time getting on and coming off that medication. I did not have a hard time. And I feel like the ranks of people who had just come out and say something as simple as, you know what, I took this SSRI and it was fine. They are outnumbered like 50 to 100 times to one by people who say it was the absolute worst thing ever and it was horrific and I've got lasting side effects. So I wanted to just put that out firstly to kind of try to counterbalance a bit. Um, I'm putting out this video for a different reason and that is because I think that there is a definite dearth of males, uh, men, guys, whatever you want to call us, uh, who talk about it. Now, I take an SSRI, I take a drug called Lexapro, and I did mention that in one, I can't remember what video, but I mentioned it because I think it is really important that men talk about this um, and normalize being on these medications. I printed out for today's video a couple of statistics. I came prepared. Uh, this is from the National Center for health statistics which is acron acronymized is that a word its acronym is the nchs it's a u.s uh, organization american organization and they say that during 2015 to 2018 these are the stats now their u.s statistics probably can be extrapolated i would guess to many developed countries during 2015 to 2018 13.2 percent of adults aged 18 and over used antidepressants in the past 30 days. So that's the cross-gender, cross-age group statistic, 13% of the population. However, use was higher among women at 17.7% than men at 8.4%. Statistic two, the percentage of antidepressant use increased with age. Um, so as people get older, they tend to be more amenable to using antidepressants from 7.9% among adults aged 18 to 39 to 14.4% for those in the 40 to 59 age group. And then when you get to the over 60s, it's 19%. Now, there was also statistics here regarding male use. So I've already given one of those 8.4% um across uh across age groups so that works out as one in 12 and 12.8 percent when we get to the over 60 i said for over 60 the cross gender um uh percentage was uh 19 percent so for men it's 12.8 percent so we see it we see a pattern that across different uh, age groups we're seeing more women than men using them but nevertheless so here's what i want you to visualize if you're thinking how weird is it to take an ssri because and this is this is why i'm making this video when i was thinking about taking an ssri for depression and anxiety now i had a, i've talked about my journey before and it was kind of a weird journey i was initially um i came to a psychiatrist Ugh, I, i'll get i'll try to give a one minute summary for many years, I was living on coffee, literally living on coffee as if it was a IV drip in my veins. Um, and to a much lesser extent, but nevertheless to an extent, uh, was using alcohol to counterbalance the coffee. Um, but really it was coffee uh, that was like my daily thing. And when I had my gallbladder surgery two years ago, I suffered enormously after the surgery from a lot of digestive problems. And... It was kind of the time when my self-medication system broke down. Um, I couldn't get off coffee. 
Um, I mean, I could, but then I was like, I just couldn't work. So I went to a psychiatrist and I said, okay, I've been living like this for 10 years and it's about time that I sort of figured this out. My hunch was that I had ADHD. I read a really compelling book called Driven to Distraction. And it seemed to match my life story so perfectly that I said, that's it. This is it. I have ADHD. That's why I'm addicted to coffee. It's a stimulant. And I just need a better stimulant and I'll be set. Uh, and I'll, everything will be okay. Um, the connection, by the way, is the coffee was, you know, if you have digestive problems, you don't want to be throwing boatloads of coffee into your system every day. Um, so I did that for a while and had a horrible experience, really, with ADHD meds. Felt... Um, um, just more stressed and uh, basically everything I was trying to fix was just made worse and finally the 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 clue I was going to say the red herring but it's the opposite whatever the opposite of red herring is the, the, the clue that eventually led to a correct diagnosis was that I got more and more depressed with these, uh, these stimulant medications and I had firstly an, an ADHD doctor not a psychiatrist just a guy who did ADHD and he said look I'm not going to continue giving you stimulants until you see a psychiatrist and you, we need to treat the mood disorder. And that's something, by the way, that's pretty standard. Um, it's well known among doctors and psychiatrists that if you give a depressed patient stimulants, it can be very, very dangerous because they can go from being maybe passively suicidal to actively suicidal. So they're really careful. So it was a very prudent uh, doctor I had. But basically he said, you're going to have to see a psychiatrist. I'm not going to see you if you don't see a psychiatrist. I said, okay, fine. So I went to see a psychiatrist. And um, he added an SSRI. He said, okay, yeah, we can keep going with the ADHD meds, but we're going to have to put you on an SSRI. So I started an SSRI. And at this point, I was just like, honestly, I'm so far invested in this process. Like I've seen multiple doctors and I'm just like, at this point, fine. But it took me a really long time to get to that point. Literally, it was my biggest fear in the world, taking one of these drugs. My biggest fear. And the reason I'm sitting down here today to record this video is to try maybe mitigate that fear for some person. Because if I knew of one friend or two friends or three friends, male friends, who were transparent about having taken SSRIs, it would have made this so much easier. And I didn't know a single person. I was not going to put out a post on Facebook saying, hey guys, uh, you know, um, I've been prescribed Lexapro. I'm really scared. Anyone take this medication? Back when anxiety was such a massive part of my daily life, that would have been way, way beyond the pale of what I would consider doing. Um, I did end up hearing of people who took these drugs through the grapevine, but they were all girls. You know, um, they'd mention, oh, I'm taking Lexapro. And I said, oh, Lexapro, I know that. That's a drug my doctor's prescribed for me and I'm too scared to take. But it was always women. Now, there is that's why I brought these statistics, because when you look at these statistics, that makes logical sense, right? There's more women taking these than men, but there are still men taking them. That's why I'm sitting here. 8.4% um, is 1 in 12 across age groups and over 60. What did I say? 1 in 8, 12.8%. So the way I would visualize this is picture of bar or, I don't know, a cowboy saloon, whatever masculine environment you want to picture, or a rugby club. And there's a team of uh, soccer, let's say 11 people, plus the referee is 12. All right, this is not exactly going to plan or script, but picture about that many men in whatever setting that you think of as your typical male environment. And one of those people during their lifetime will take a medication like this, an SSRI. And if you um, picture the same group of men, but picture them elderly now, they're over 60 and they're drawing down a pension and whatever, then it goes down to one in eight. So as people get older, they become more amenable or become more depressed. I'm not sure if the research says what the case may be, but um, that is how it goes. Um, so I just want to come back quickly to my mental health journey. And I was taking these ADHD meds, had to be put on the antidepressant. And I had this light bulb moment where I realized that the what I came into a site to firstly to a doctor to try to fix which was, okay, I can't do anything without coffee. I'm just like dragging. I'm not motivated. And I was very functional. I was holding down jobs, but I just knew I wasn't fulfilling my potential. And it was when I finally got on an SSRI that I said, oh, that's what I was missing. I didn't need to stimulate myself. I needed to just quell the anxiety. And when the anxiety settled, uh, my brain cleared and I could concentrate and I could think and I could be social. 
And that's the course I've gone on. I've only taken one executive decision in my time under psychiatric care. And that was to tell my psychiatrist, we're done with ADHD meds. Um, and SSRI has been the best thing for me. And that's what I've been on for the last few months. And uh, the last time I didn't appreciate how much he's helped me this time. This time I think I'm much more cognizant. I can really feel that I'm um, performing better at work, performing better, uh, making more friends. Um, I'm having the bravery to put this out on YouTube. Globally, overall, my life is just better. Um, so, a tipping point for me when I went back to my doctor was watching a video on YouTube. And that's why, I'm, that's this is the second reason I'm creating this video. When I was at this point of being wound up on ADHD meds and thinking, you know what, this really isn't what I need. I can tell this is maybe helping a bit, but this isn't the medication for me. At some point, I got on YouTube, and I hadn't been on YouTube looking for mental health videos in a long time. Whatever I punched into YouTube, whatever keywords I punched in, I got to this video by this lady called Lauren Eliza Elizabeth. Lauren Elizabeth. L Lauren, that's a tongue twister. Lauren Elizabeth. And she is like this um, female influencer. You know, she's kind of, as a female followership, and she was just like not the type of person I would have watched not to be discriminatory, but, you know, she talks about fashion stuff to other girls. She's very much a, you know, a ladies influencer. And I just never have come across this YouTube channel. But I watched, I was two minutes into her video and I said, ha, this is really something because she just seemed like such a normal, relatable person. And she was talking about why she takes uh, anxiety medication every day. And whatever it was, I'd watched a lot of videos about people's experience on SSRI and SSRI withdrawal. And, you know, psychiatrists and pop psychiatrists. But for some reason, it was this person that seemed so relatable and so normal to me that I said, you know what, if, it, if she can be on these drugs and be honest about being on these drugs, I can be on these drugs too. And that's when I made an appointment with my psychiatrist. I literally emailed him after this video and I said, okay, some, this is not working for me. Um, I want to see you as soon as I can. When do you have a time slot? And that was literally a turning point in my journey so far like I exaggerate not i watched this video and i was like okay i have to do something so i sent a whatsapp uh to this guy because that's how everything works in israel through whatsapp so i can imagine that there is a social stigma to mental health treatment and that it's difficult for people to be open with their friends about it but then i got this really got me thinking i was like well if this person lauren, lauren elizabeth didn't say, you know what, I'm going to record a video about taking anxiety medication. I would not have seen that video. I would not have been convinced to reach out to my doctor. I would not have made that change in my direction. So I know there's a lot of pushback about about this. A lot of older people who say, you know, the baby boomer generation maybe you say, oh, you should keep these things to yourself and that's your private business for you and your doctor and don't talk about it on the internet. And I've definitely got that from people. But that's why I'm here recording because if I can do for one person what this person did for me, it was worth sitting here for 20 minutes while I enjoyed the sunshine, sunshine, so it wasn't really much hassle to me. Um, I have one more thing to say about this, but my mind is currently blanking out. I did a good enough job. I at least tried to make a script for this video. Um, oh, yeah, how transparent I am about it. So that's definitely something I'm worrying, I have worried about. By me putting something like this on YouTube, every potential... Um, future employer is going to see this video, potentially see this video. So that's a risk I take and I'm cognizant of taking that risk. <sighs> what do I feel about it? I feel like we need to move into a world where it's totally normalized to take mental health uh, medication. And I guess, call me irresponsible, but if a potential client or a potential employer sees this video and says, we don't want to hire this guy, he had depression or anxiety and he took an SSRI and he's too risky, that's fine. I'll just find someone who's okay with it. That's that's my rationale. How honest am I about it? I don't go meeting people and say, Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm taking 20 milligrams of escitalopram every day. Nice to meet you. I don't think there's any reason for that kind of upfront. That would just be weird. Um, so what I do instead is, if it's appropriate or if it's worth mentioning, I don't hide it. So in other words, I'd say the moment's been like this. Um, one thing I've been... Uh, resolving with this thing is this whole coffee alcohol dance i talked about so i'm in a much better place now i drink far less coffee and i 
drink alcohol probably as much as I did before. I wasn't really a crazy level of consumption, but I've known for years that I can't overdo alcohol. I can have one or two drinks and that's about it. Um, and now when I'm out with friends, you know, sometimes people will say, hey, let's go to another bar, another bar. And I have to say, look, um, that sounds great, really does. But I have anxiety and I can drink a little bit on this medication. But if I have any more than that, it's going to, I can't do it. It's going to, I know the risk of panic attacks or making depression worse is just too great. So sorry, have a great time. Um, and stuff like that. That's kind of about it really. Or someone mentions, oh, I take Lexapro. I say, oh, amazing. I take Lexapro too. Great to meet someone else who's open about it. So that's kind of how open I am about it. I think I'd like to suggest that that's kind of normal amount. I don't go past that. Um, but equally, I don't see any reason not to be at that level. I don't see a reason to hide it. Uh, because I think that if everyone hit it, no one would know. One in eight people. What was it? What was it? What was the stat? 12.0%. And overall, it's... Um, overall 17.7 like you know one in one in five elder pe- older people over 60s that's a crazy amount are taking an SSR are taking an antidepressant you go to a, uh, the, the queue in your Starbucks and you see five people in queue uh, one of them are taking it so if, ever, if no one says they take it we perpetuate this culture where people who really need these medications who are maybe at risk of suicide or at risk of just really not living a fulfilled life are thinking I'm the only one on the planet with panic attacks or depression who needs to take this medication. I'm such a freak that my doctors had to prescribe this. And I think that all stems from a culture of silence about it. And that's why I'm doing this video. So hope that was of use um, to somebody. Um, And those are my thoughts why I think more men in particular, because I think women are outdoing men. It's not coincidental that the one person I found or connected with was a woman, a young lady, There's more women talking about this than men on uh, YouTube, but there are some guys, and I think that's brilliant. Women do a great job at setting up women support groups. Men need to do a good job as well, Uh, especially young men, men in the under 40 category. Uh, Generally, I don't think there's really... I'm conflicted. Is there a point in segmenting along the lines of gender and age? But I think there's such a lack of understanding that at this point, we can't... Beggars can't be choosers. We should set up support groups for, you know, men under 50 with depression, men over 50 with depression, women under 50, women over 50. Set them all up. And if it really matters to someone that they're in a male-only environment or a women-only environment or a young person-only environment or an older person-only environment, let them have that option for uh, finding that channel of support, a a network of peers I'm talking about that is uh, comfortable for them. So yeah, that's why I'm doing this. And again, the message I'm saying is I would like, personally, I can't orchestrate this change myself, but I can do, be the change I want to see in the world. Um, More young men should, if they're taking SSRI, I don't think anyone needs to keep it as a burning secret. Don't probably run into your HR department and tell them that um, because there'd be probably no advantage to doing that and potentially disadvantages. But equally, I don't think hiding it makes uh, socially or even globally really makes any sense. And I hope we can move towards a more understanding and compassionate world in which everyone feels empowered to disclose uh, whatever they're going through really r- regardless of depression anxiety SSRIs, antipsychotics mood stabilizers, whatever that mental health across the board is normalised. Thank you guys for watching and if by any chance I don't even, you know, I'm not going to push for subscribers anymore because my YouTube channel is such a potpourri of topics, I just do it for fun And if you want to get more videos from me, for whatever reason, hit subscribe. If you don't, that's cool as well. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.